हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर हरबंस लाल एज यू ऑल नो आई एम कंटेस्टिंग फॉर द पोस्ट ऑफ वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ए आई यू एस ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ कन्वर्सेशन विथ माई फ्रेंड्स एंड सपोर्टर्स आई हैव रियलाइज मैनी ऑफ देम आर एडवाइजिंग एंड गाइडिंग देयर फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स ड्यू टू ओवर स्टेज हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम माई टीम कंप्राइजिंग ऑफ डॉक्टर इकेदा लाल एंड डॉक्टर टिंकू बाली राजदान will discuss with the experts to bring to you beat the covid series of short videos to clear all your doubts and to give you authentic precise and brief knowledge hello everyone i'm dr tinku bali rasdan and i welcome you all to this series on beat the covid today we have with us dr atul bogia senior consultant in the department of medicine at sir ganga ram hospital new delhi dr bogia has been at the forefront of managing covid patients and their complications and he has a vast experience behind him so welcome dr bogia it's a pleasure to have you and thank you for taking out time to be with us today uh, today we'll be asking you about the various drugs that are given in covid patients uh, not in mild cases but in a little advanced cases So, firstly, I'd like to clear the doubts regarding plasma therapy. That which are the patients who are right candidates for plasma therapy, and uh, how soon in the timeline or how late in the timeline of the disease does plasma therapy have to be given to these patients? Most of the therapies would work if given early. So, within the first seven ten day window is the window when most of the therapies would actually work. Thereafter, uh, it is more of supportive care and steroids which would help. So. plasma therapy there have been contradictory reports where certain studies saying that it's not beneficial with certain mm-hmm. groups saying that it is beneficial but what we have seen in clinical practice that it would benefit in certain subset of patients who are early on getting to the hospital who are on oxygen a requirement is there and are non immune that is they do not have their own antibodies so basically plasma therapy is preformed antibodies which you are transfusing to the patient so that probably they would mount uh, some immune response against the infection so early on in the ther- in the course of illness so probably within initial 5 7 days of illness if the patient gets into the hospital is requiring oxygen and is antibody negative because now a lot of people are vaccinated they may have an immune response already they may have antibodies to some extent in their body so those set of patients may not uh, actually require a plasma because uh, they are, that is basically preformed antibodies so it's early on in the disease on oxygen they may have some benefit uh, so dr bogia uh, which is the subset of patients that would require injection remdesivir to be added to their treatment plan So you know, nowadays everyone's looking around for this injection. But uh, which are the patients who actually need this? If you could shed some light on that. Antiviral drugs work very well when used early on in the illness. The timing of the drugs is most important. So whatever little benefit, because there are again contradictory reports for remdesivir with not being much mortality. There no mortality benefit, and only reducing the hospital stay is what we've seen with remdesivir. So. early on within first 7 to 10 days is the time when remdesivir actually would help so if it is an antiviral drug so any patient who is hospitalized is on oxygen is a candidate for remdesivir provided he is in the hospital initial 7 to 10 days a role of an antiviral drug after 10 days 15 days 20 days is probably not there and you need to look for the renal and liver function test so kidney function test egfr should be more than 30 in these patients who are getting remdesivir uh, the liver enzyme should not be 3 to 5 times higher than normal so and we monitor the liver enzymes while therapy because there is uh, some amount of transaminitis in these kind of patients so what is the duration of treatment with remdesivir what is the duration the duration of treatment for patients who are on oxygen a 5 day therapy that is 200 mg on the very first day and 100 mg on the following 4 days is the dose that usually patients who are on oxygen or patients who are on ventilator ecmo 
ICU patients where we feel that viremia may be higher in those subset of patients up to 10 days of therapy. So the most of the trials are about five days and 10 days. So five days is for moderate uh, to severe patients, but non-ventilated and somebody who is on the ventilator, NIV or ECMO there in those subset for 10 days. Um, also, what is the role of in early disease? A uh, lot of physicians like to give favipiravir or favifluor. Uh, so what exactly does it actually help in uh, modulating the course of the disease or does it not work at all? Or should we, you know, frantically look for it? So that's what uh, I'm like. uh, It is basically an antiviral, oral antiviral drug. Again, in these things also, you need to look for liver kidney function. It should not be given all across the board. Patients of renal failure and all should not be, you know, prescribed it. So we need to be careful uh, about that. Uh, it may also cause uh, transaminitis as uh, so we need to look for that. The other thing as far as the benefit is concerned. So early on a drug, not much. There is no mortality benefit as such, but maybe. Uh, some, uh, you know, small studies say that you can have a, a you know, your symptom free two days earlier than the normal, but it's uh, nothing very great, but, uh, you know, so you can use it, but right up front, you know, within five days or so, there's no point when, you know, there are changes, people are coming and they, eight days, the fever is running, CT is showing, now we should start having progress. I, you know, that is not the time for, it is for mild cases early on, maybe. Very early on, you know, second, third day, maybe, maybe some uh, reducing the duration of illness, but not very hard evidence. Okay, okay that clears a lot of doubts. Uh, also, there's another drug that now people are frantically looking for, and that is tolicizumab. So, which are the subsets of patients that you need to start this medicine in? So, it is a very selected subgroup of patients which would require this drug. It is not to be given in all patients. This is for patients who are critically ill, patients who are uh, who are free from bacterial infection, ensure that do not have active bacterial infection or tuberculosis underlying. They should uh, be in the hospital and on oxygen uh, or a, a ventilator, despite oxygen support or ventilator and steroids for 48 to 72 hours who do not show an improvement. There is a rising inflammatory markers. Oxygen need is increasing. Radiological deterioration is there despite being on steroids and other supportive ter uh, therapy. And we have ensured that they do not have any other underlying bacterial uh, infection in those a small subset of patients, it may be used uh, with caution. Uh, the most common uh, problem or side effect which may encounter is uh, secondary bacterial infection, sepsis. So that is what that is why we have to be very careful by using this drug. Uh, what about other investigational therapy? So there are drugs like integrated interferon, which was recently got approval by. Um, uh, the Indian authorities that is uh, being marketed by the Zydus, which is uh, marketed by the name of Virafix, which is a uh, single subcutaneous infection. It's a pegylated interferon, which was being earlier used for hepatitis B, C treatment. So it is uh, got an em emergency use approval for hospitalized patient with moderate disease. That is patient who are, uh, you know, saturation is between 92, 93, 94. And those set of patients, a single injection, probably they say, uh, reduces the uh, severity of illness. So that is one drug which has got recent approval. The other yeah. drug, like uh, Bartisanib, other, uh, 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 which are the JAK2 inhibitors, which were commonly being used earlier for rheumatological conditions and uh, similar counterpart because Bartisanib was not uh, difficult to procure. So people have been using Tofacitinib. Uh, they are all the uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs basically being used in rheumatological conditions. There has been trial in which partisanip combined with remdesivir in moderate to severe illness has shown some benefit. So that is why that is being used in a selected few patients uh, provided there is no underlying uh, infection. And the only problem probably is that we need to be careful about thrombosis because they are prone to cause DVT. So anyways, most of these patients would be anticoagulated. 
so we need to be careful. So bartesinib four milligram once a day for up to two weeks uh, is what uh, the trial says. Another drug has been approved, the oral drug, two uh, deoxyglucose, which is a sachet, which is supposed to reduce, uh, but that's too early. Uh, so the, there are a whole lot of other drugs which are coming in. Other drugs like bevacizumab, which is already been used in cancer therapies, has also been tried. So these are all uh, in patients who are sick patients where you have uh, fired all guns like steroids and remdesivir and oxygen and patients are not improving. So in those uh, subset of patients, after excluding secondary infection, uh, people have been trying, but very limited uh, data is available as of now. So it's more of experimental as of now. Uh, another thing that I would like to ask is uh, the role of anticoagulants. So you just mentioned in one of your previous uh, series that patients who have a high D-dimer, they need to be started on anticoagulants. So I would like to ask you that a patient who is on home, uh, in home isolation with a high D-dimer, so what is the anticoagulant that this patient should be taking? Oral anticoagulants or injections, subcutaneous, uh, what could be that? So uh, the maximum benefit is with low molecular weight heparin, what uh, is there. But uh, in home isolation, sometimes it becomes very difficult for them to be prescribed because some people are elderly or they are because they are in isolation, so nobody can go in and they are not tuned to take injections. So then... Uh, you can, uh, you know, go for oral anticoagulants, uh, that is the direct acting anticoagulants, which we have been using. Uh, so something like Epixaban, Rivaroxaban in uh, low dose uh, for prevention of uh, uh, coagulation is uh, something which can be started. Uh, we have to ensure that the uh, platelets are normal and have to counsel the patient that if there is any bleeding or anything, it needs to be stopped because the problem with home isolation is that the patient is on his own. He is alone in the room and uh, probably nobody would be there to guide him. Uh, only video calls are happening with the family also. Mm -hmm. So we just have to counsel them accordingly. So uh, that has cleared a lot of our doubts. So thank you for being with us, Dr. Govia, and uh, clearing all these uh, concepts. You've given us very clear, concise uh, information. Uh, which we needed at this uh, time where there's so much confusion going around. So thank you for taking out time. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.